Good day again, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. I hope that you're all fine today as has been in the past. As the Lord is blessing your life, I also trust that as you continue to follow this uh, series of lessons that you have received so much from the Lord for your own personal uh, consumption, but also that you may be able to share it with people that you love, people that you know, your friends, your workmates, your neighbors, where you live, and uh, anyone that you may meet along the way, you can, you know, share always the blessings that you receive from the Lord. Uh, today's lesson, we still continue with walking with God, but uh, our uh, sub-theme is uh, fellow workers with the Lord. That's our sub-topic, which... Uh, means that as you are walking with God, you work in partnership with the Lord. You labor together with Him. Uh, it's important that as a follower of Jesus, you understand one very important reason why He invited you to walk along with Him. It is not only to receive personal benefits, it's not only to receive salvation, forgiveness of sins, you know, a good life, a transformed life. It's not only to enjoy all the favors and the blessings that comes from the abundant heart of our Father God, but also because being His beloved child, He wants you to partner with Him. Let's look at these verses that uh, the Apostle Paul has written for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, he says, For we are God's co-workers, or for we are co-workers in God's service, or fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. So Paul was saying, we are, referring to himself, and his team of ministers, sometimes we call them servants of God. These are people that has grown significantly in their spiritual life, in their walk with God, so that now they are a part of the team that Apostle Paul leads in proclaiming the good news to the places where the Spirit of God leads them to go and in investing their lives into the work of the Lord. And so Paul calls them fellow laborers, including himself. And yet he addressed his audience, you, he said to them, are God's field. You are God's field. You are God's building. He was referring to the Christians in Corinth. These were a company of people whose spiritual growth varies. Many of them still are infants in the Lord, newly born believers in the Lord. Of course, a few of them has already matured in the Lord. And yet, around them are many others who has not yet come to know the Lord in a personal way. And they are included when Paul mentioned to them that you are God's field. You are God's building. And so Paul was talking to himself and his team as God's fellow workers. And God has given them the opportunity to minister, to serve, as co-laborers with God in helping these people. And so it is important that we understand that. Another verse that Paul has written is in his second letter to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. He says, as God's co-workers or as fellow laborers with God, laborers with the Lord, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Again, there is that line, God's co-workers, meaning to say a believer has reached a point in his Christian life that he is now ready and excited to be used by God, to labor together with God, to become an instrument in the hands of the Lord, to contribute towards the expansion of the family of God. Sometimes we call it the kingdom of God, not just a mere consumer from the start of his life until he dies, but that there is a starting point of his spiritual journey with the Lord. And then there is a progression from there on 
so that as I mentioned earlier, it will come to a point whereupon he will partner with his father in the expansion of his kingdom. Here is another verse that I'd like us to read again, written by the Apostle Paul himself. In 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians, I should say, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15. He says, sir, even if you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, guardians or teachers in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. He was the Apostle Paul talking about himself being used by God in bringing many, many people unto the Lord. Where previously these people were pagans, they were not believers in God, they do not know the gospel, they do not know Jesus Christ. But through Paul, through the willingness and the obedience of Paul, because Paul has grown so much in his spiritual life, he obeyed the call of the Lord on his life. He abandoned, left behind his uh, earthly work in order to fulfill the mandate of the Lord in his life. And so wherever he went and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, many came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result, they became part of the family of God. And Paul was instrument in their birthing into the kingdom of God. That's why he said, I became your father through the gospel. What a joy and what a great privilege that will be yours and mine if we are able to fulfill that mandate as well. Unfortunately, now as we look at the Christians all around us, so many of them has not progressed in their walk with God. They remain infants, mere consumers of a program that repeatedly happened every week in a church building. They go there because they want to listen to a sermon. They go there because they want to see a program. They want to receive music and everything that's happening there in the church just mere consumers, but they never become contributors in the expansion of the kingdom of God. Many of them have spent 15 years, 30 years going to church every week, every month of their life. And yet, they have never become used by God to birth somebody in the kingdom of God. This is the lesson and the truth that I want to speak to you today. God wants to partner with you. He has invited you to come along with him and follow him. Very much like what Jesus has said, if you remember, when he passed by the place where Peter and John were fishing at that morning, and he told them, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That's the same thing, just said in a different way. But he was asking them to come along with him so that as, he, as they come along with him, they will learn. They will be transformed, they will be changed, they will be broken, they will be built up, and then it will come to a point where they too can be used by God to win many people back unto the Lord. Again, I will repeat this. This is what I am trying to instill in your mind today as I'm sharing this word. God wants to use your life as an instrument to bring blessing to many nations, including many nations all around us. But let's go back to what Paul has mentioned here in the verse. I have became in Christ Jesus, for in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I became your father through the gospel. We all know that a father has three uh, primary functions. <clears throat> One is a father is used in birthing or a father births some, some, something or someone. Like when you are a biological father, like me, I'm a biological father. God has blessed me with three children. So I was used by God to give birth to three children. That's why I'm a father. But some people are called father of modern medicine, you know, father of mathematics, father of this and that. Because through them, they were highly instrumental in birthing something that's important that contributes to, you know, the benefits of so many people. And you can be a father in that manner. In this regard, God wants us to be used by him in winning people, in, in becoming a father, spiritual father to them, so that 
through us, they came to know the Lord, just like through the Apostle Paul, many came to know the Lord. Many congregations were established through the efforts of the Apostle Paul because he took seriously his walk with the Lord. He asked directions from the Lord, guidance from the Lord, as if he were asking, what's next for me, Lord, after I've encountered you and experienced your grace, your power, your might, your transforming power? What's next for me? As if he was asking that. And the Lord just keep on telling him what to do and what will happen next. I believe that that's what that's what that is one important question that we need to ask as well. What's next for me, Lord? After I receive favor from you, after I I know that you are the 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 savior, and I repented because your spirit touched me because I heard your I heard the gospel because you know you've shown your your grace to me. And I am saved. I'm forgiven. I'm, my life is now beginning to change. Now, what's next for me? That should be a good question. But again, so many Christians, they're not asking that question. Instead, they're asking so many other questions that does not relate to this particular um, issue of being used with God. Many times our questions are about, where will I get my next food? How will I feed myself? Where will I get money to buy new things? Those are some many of the questions that, that comes to our mind. And has nothing to do with the expansion of the kingdom of God. That is why, if you remember, the last lesson and many other previous lessons, we always, um, we usually go to Matthew chapter 6, where upon Paul, I should say Jesus, was talking to his disciples. And he was telling them, you should not worry about food. You should not worry about clothes. You know, our, my father will take good care of you, even as he takes good care of all the birds. And then in verse 33, again, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Which means to say that if we, if we prioritize the expansion of the kingdom of God, partnering with God so that his kingdom will keep on expanding, by the way, what does that mean, the kingdom of God expanding or seeking the kingdom of God? Simply put, it means finding the lost so that more and more people who are taken captive by the enemy and now lives in the kingdom of darkness will transfer from that kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. More and more people are lost will return to the Father. That is simply what it means, seeking the kingdom of God. And when we put that as our priority wherever we go, the Lord said, I'll take good care of you. All the things that you think about will be provided for. So to ask every day, what's my breakfast? What's, what will I wear? These are, these are not necessary things that you need to keep on asking. Might as well that you ask, what's next for me? I'm now walking with you. What's next for me? You have blessed me this far. What's next for me? What is, your, what is my next assignment? Who is the next person that I need to talk to? I need to share the mar marvelous things that you have done in my life. These are good questions that, you, that you, you should always ask as a person who walks with the Lord. <clears throat> so, Paul was talking about being used by God as an instrument in birthing many, many lives into the kingdom of God. Again, I would say the greatest privilege in our walk with the Lord is being used by Him so that others came to know the Lord because of us. This is the greatest privilege. And this is also where the enemy is doing his best to, to stop the believers, the Christians, from understanding this. He, he can make you busy, he can make me busy in other temporary things and not get involved in the kingdom business of our Father. He can make us uh, feel okay with our attendance every Sunday, with our little giving, you know, every offering time, uh, just to appease our minds so that we don't feel guilty. He finds okay for us if we go home after doing all these little things for as long as we don't get involved in the business of all business, and that is fathering people into the kingdom of God. So I'd like us to uh, consider how important this was for the Apostle Paul. That is why it is in this business that Paul gave his life. Not only gave his life to the Lord 
in order to be saved. That's just the starting point. He gave his life to the call of the Lord on his life. And what was that call about? To proclaim the good news. So that as good news is proclaimed, people will have faith after they have heard the gospel because faith comes by hearing. And after faith has come to them, they will be saved and forgiven. Then they can start their walk with God. And then they will grow continuously and then come to a point where they too will be used by God. That is exactly the progression that you ought to happen in your own life if you wish to be partners with God. So in the fathering business, there is the birthing business, but there is also a portion whereupon you start helping people to be broken before God. You're not, a, nor, you're not just a birther. You must be a breaker, a gentle breaker. I will explain that a little bit more as we progress, but I will connect that with the next thing that ought to happen. You should be a builder. Because that's exactly what God our Father has done to us. If you watch, you know, and start carefully uh, take a good look at your own Christian life, you went through those three things, you know. You were birthed into the kingdom of God. If you read in John chapter 3, you will remember there that the discussion of, of Jesus Christ with a man named Nicodemus. Whereupon, you know, Nicodemus one night came to Jesus and asked, you know, I have never seen a man as powerful as you. You have done this and this and this. I can only uh, guess that you have come from, from above. And did Jesus answer him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can I be born again when I'm already very old? I cannot return to the womb of my mother. Of course, he took it literally, but Jesus talking about something else. But then as the progression of the story, we find out that Jesus was talking about being born from heaven. Except a man be born of water and of spirit, born from heaven. Because anyone that can be born here on earth will still be earthly. Even if he will be born again five times for as long as it is birth from heaven, from earth, it still be earthly. The only way that we can be really born is when we are born spiritually. And that happens through the work of God's grace using His Word. But then that's just not the end. That is just the beginning because after that, you go through a process. Remember, the birth is not a process. It is an event. It does not happen after it happened. It happened just once. But growth is a process. This breaking is a process. This building is a process. And the more familiar word that we use is the word discipleship. Many Christians are born of the Spirit already. They have received salvation, forgiveness of sins. They are sure, sure that when they die, they go to heaven. And yet they have not gone through the process of being broken and being built up so that they can be partners together with God. That is a great uh, what can I say? Uh, failure of what has happened in our churches. We just, you know, went all the motion of worshiping and singing and, you know, giving and worshiping and singing and giving and everything program that we've done for years and years. And yet our Christians, our people who are supposedly walking with God and should be instruments with God are not reaching to their full potential because they stop somewhere in their walk with God. So let me again reiterate that to you this morning as you watch this broadcast. After you are birthed into the kingdom of God, you must be broken before the Lord. You must be stripped of everything that you cling unto yourself or hold unto yourself as something important. Because now you're beginning to realize that there's nothing more important than God and his word in your life. That is how you have to be broken. You have to come before God and say, God, I have nothing and I am nothing without you. My degrees, my education, my connections, my friends, my properties, my wealth, even my health is nothing without you. Because the starting point of the building of one's life is the breaking of one's life. When you are not broken, you cannot be built up. And many times we refuse to be broken because brokenness means pain. But brokenness is the, the foundation of blessing. 
There is no, I mean, you will not appreciate the blessing when, when you're not broken. Hmm. That blessing, supposedly, that will make good your life will only ruin your life. A blessing that comes onto a person that is not broken will only cause him to be proud and to be arrogant and will, will destroy him. That is why we've seen some people, Christians, all around us, or may have heard of their names mentioned, that it looks like they started very well in their work with God, but they didn't last. Because when they started to receive blessings, later on, the blessings exposed their life, that they have not gone through a process of brokenness. And so welcome that in your life. You yourself have to be broken so that God can use you to also minister to someone else that needs to be broken in the presence of the Lord. One day I was invited to speak, this was last week, just last week, about, uh, I was invited or asked to deliver or to, say, to, to give a message to fathers. And just like that, as I was thinking, because I said, Early, when the person called me that I need to do that, I said, yes, I okay, no problem. But the truth is, I had no message in my mind and in my heart. What I was preparing at the time was a broadcast, just this one that I'm doing. So after the broadcast, I was sitting down for a while and just, you know, sharing and talking. But I was thinking, a few moments from now, I will have to stand again and face the camera for another broadcast. What will I say? I was asking the Lord, what, what will I say? Just like that, the Lord gave me a message. Just these three, these three. A father is someone who births. A father is someone who breaks. A father is someone who builds. And the Lord prompted me to think about when you break an animal. Because an animal, like a carabao, I'm very familiar with animals, especially carabao, because when I was a young kid, that's my job. I take good care of our carabao. I took good care of our carabao. And the carabao, before it can be used in the field to carry loads, to plow the ground, that carabao has to be broken. Or else his brute force will become useless. In, in fact, not useless only, but will become harmful and hurtful to other people. So that animal has to be brought somewhere. I remember we had to put a rope, you know, sa Bisaya pa na, tuhugo ni mo ang carabao. Me and my father and two other men, went to the, uh, the river side in order to do this to our carabao. Three years old carabao. Because you cannot train a carabao without first putting a hook inside the nose of the carabao. So he has to be broken. He has to learn obedience, submission. He has to submit his will to you before you can teach him so that his life will become fruitful and productive. Exactly the same concept need to happen unto your life. You may be saved and forgiven, but if you are not broken, you might not become useful in the kingdom of God. In fact, there's a danger that you will become harmful and hurtful to other people. So I beg you, be broken. But I also ask the others who have already gone to this, through this breaking process, allow yourself to, you, to be used by God. In the spirit of kindness and gentleness. That's why we talk always about uh, passion for God and compassion for people. It will take a lot of compassion in order to be used by God to help others go through their breaking process in the kingdom of God. So a father is a birther, but a father is a breaker, and a father is a builder. And your life can also be used by God in the same manner. Think about your opportunity. When you have a business, in your business, you will meet people. You will meet people. Definitely you will meet people. In your workplace, you will meet people. You are surrounded by people. And God can use you as a father in that workplace. So that three, four people in that workplace will be birthed into the kingdom of God through you. Because you yourself has already been born into the kingdom of God. But not only that, because now you are beginning to understand how it should flow, then God can use you to break them, to help them go through the breaking process, to comfort them, 
when it is almost difficult for them to, you know, go through. Some people are afraid of the breaking process of God. You know, eh? some people say, oh, I'm afraid to fully give my life to Jesus because I've seen others, they give their life to Jesus and then bankrupt ilang negosyo. Hadlok ay kuana. But it's a breaking process. It, God is not taking away something that you need. He's just going through a process in your life, breaking you so that greater things can come into your life. Because if you're not broken, these greater things, it may come, but it will ruin your life. And God can help you, you know, in that, in that uh, process. You can be used by God. You can be a father to someone else. You can build lives of other people. You can invest into them. You can speak to them. You can care for them. Here's another verse I'd like us to, to read. Again, this was written by the Apostle Paul. This time he wrote this to his beloved disciple by the name of Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. But let me read the verses before verse 21. <clears throat> let me read verse 20. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes, and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter. Now, if you want to know what Paul meant about the latter, then you have to read the whole chapter. Because he mentioned there to his son in faith, Timothy, about things that he needs to stop doing. He needs to throw away because this will hinder him from becoming a mighty and powerful instrument in the hand of God. So those who cleanse themselves from the latter, let me interject for a moment. It is our responsibility to cleanse ourselves because that is a sign of maturity. You know, when we depend on others for our own cleansing, that is a sign of immaturity. Look at a little child, two years old, three years old, cannot clean up himself. Four years old. Five years old, di pa kaya na, makabao, malimpyo. When he goes to the CR to relieve himself, he has to cry, ah! And somebody should run and help him. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes. That is what I'd like you also to think about. You are a potential instrument for a special purpose, for a noble purpose. Made holy, noble because you will be used by God to father people into the kingdom of God, to take good care of them, to help them go through the process of being broken so that when God starts building your li their lives, you too will also a contributor to that so that when God will fully fulfill the purpose and his design for them, you will have the joy of seeing the privilege of being contributor, an instrument into their own life. Made holy, useful to the master, prepared to do any good work. You will be an instrument. Now, I want you to think of that joy, the joy, the privilege of being an instrument in the hands of God. Being used by God to, to bless many people. So it's a progression. You are a birther, you contribute in the breaking and in the building, but above all, you will work in partnership with the Father to advance His kingdom here on earth. God is always looking for men and women who are willing and available to be used by Him. When you look at what happened in the Old Testament, even as well as in the New Testament, you will find many people that have been used by God. Like Abraham, of course, like 
Jacob, Joseph, like David, Daniel. But you will always see the flow of their lives. They always go through the breaking process. And this breaking process also at the same time was what made them, what built them up strong and steadfast and firm in their faith. You read. So that now you will begin to realize and in fact, you will welcome the breaking and the building of God of your life. Every day when you come to Him, remember we are encouraging everyone to put God first on a daily basis in their lives. How do you do that? You do that through your devotional life. You find a place together with your Bible. You bring your Bible. Find a place to talk to the Lord. The Lord should be the first person that you talk to. His voice should be the first voice that you hear at the beginning of the day. Because you are preparing. That as you go to your work, you go to school, you go to your business, God will use you. That's the idea. You prepare your heart, you prepare your mind. And so you go to this place in order to talk with the Father, in order to compare notes with Him, welcome His gentle voice, you know, teach you, encourage you, affirm you, and prepare you as a whole. So that when you go to your places, God has someone ready and prepared to work in partnership with Him. In birthing others into the kingdom, in helping others to be broken, in helping others to be built up in their walk with God. And that should be you. That should be me. You do not need to live what you are doing right now, for example, you are a teacher, or you're a doctor, or nurse, or you're a businessman. You do not need to shut your shop to do this. Right where you are, God can use you. If only you will prepare your heart and your mind. If only you will acknowledge that the reason why God has called you and asked you to walk with Him is so that you can partner with Him in expanding His kingdom. I pray that God will enable you enable us all it is a liberating thing to know that the burden is not on us but on the lord you know when we are asked by god we were asked by god to partner with him no i remember when um like i have a son he was a little boy like two or three years old we, we would start training you know our children so we for example we want to get a pail of water Transfer it from one place to the other place. And we oh, come, come, you help me. And so this little thought there, about three years old, will put his finger also or his hand at the side of the pail. And then pretending to labor with you, to carry the pail with you. But of course, he is not exerting any effort. It is you, the father, who is bringing the whole thing. Him, just the privilege. And it looks that he is okay. The same thought, or idea is with our Father in heaven. When we partner with Him, the pressure is not actually on us. The pressure is on Him. He is the one that exerts effort so that things will happen. He is the one that will create, perform the miracles. It's not us. When we pray for the sick, it's we are not the healer. God is the healer. When we, when we, when we share the gospel for people to be saved, and then somebody got saved because God works in his life. We're not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. His Spirit is the one that's at work. God is the one that's performing the miracles. We're just the partner. Little human partners. The Father is happy to see us contributing our little things in the expansion of his kingdom. That is why we have no right to take any credit at all. In any accomplishments that we receive or we, we, we got, in any success, we, we don't have the right to claim. We don't have. We cannot say, ah, ako good, my lucky. We cannot. It, because everything is of the Lord. 
He just gave us the privilege and the joy. He wants to give us the experience. I believe this is just a little preparation for something more that God has in the future for all of us. Believe me, I want to encourage you before I close this session, this today. God is inviting you to work in partnership with Him right now, right here in this world, right here in Davao or where you are, in Kidipawa, in Mati, or in Jensen, or in Takurong, right where you are. God is inviting you to work in partnership with Him. If I were you, I'll jump into that opportunity and do my best. I prepare myself. I will seek God early in the morning. I will give my everything into this preparation because this is preparing me for the greater things that even my mind cannot comprehend. What are these? But let me give you a verse for that. In Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth, he made mention about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me start reading verse number 1 so we'll have a little background. If any of you has a dispute with another, with another, dare it take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know the Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Verse three. Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Imagine that. Verse number three. Do you not know that we, he's talking to Christians, we, we believers, we followers of God, we will judge angels. Have you ever thought about that? One day, this is not happening anytime soon, but in the eternal plan of God, there is a moment when you and me will be appointed as judges over angels. Imagine that. Now, if you cannot judge them for little things, you cannot make decisions on limple matters, your mind easily gets upset or you easily gets confused. Mate, how can God appoint you to become a judge over angels one day? If little things, you know, makes you upset easily. I'm telling you, there's so much that God has prepared. In the Bible, it says in 1 Corinthians, eyes have not seen nor ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. There's so many that God has prepared. And right now, he's inviting us to walk with him so he can build our life so he can break our life, so he can prepare our life, so he can give us opportunity to experience, to gain training, to gain knowledge, you know, to increase in our capacities, because one day he will give us the highest privilege of representing him, not only in this earth, not only before people, but even before angels. What a great, great privilege, my brothers and sisters. So I'm encouraging you this morning, take seriously your walk with God. If you are out there somewhere listening, watching this video, and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, that should be your starting point. You cannot walk with God without first giving your life to Him. Repenting of your sins, making a decision to turn away from sin and the things of the world so that you can start living your life for Him, start your walk with Him. And it's just so simple to do that. Right where you are seated, right in the comfort of your sala, or maybe in the kitchen, wherever you are situated watching this video, you can stop for a moment and call on the name of the Lord. Just tell him, Jesus, I want to be safe. I cannot save myself. I'm a sinner. I inherited a portion of sin, and I am a sinner myself. I cannot save myself. I know you are the only Savior. Save me. And I believe that that moment when you call on him to save you, he will save you. Because Jesus said, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then start your walk with him.
If anyone is listening to this broadcast and you have been walking with God but you kind of slow down or maybe you allow these issues around you to disturb you and distract you, let me call you again. This is a wonderful opportunity to take a U-turn, return to the path that God has given you in the beginning. Wala pa'y nagmahay nga nag-alaga doon tinood kay Lord. But I can anticipate that later on, many, many, many people, magmahay sila. They will beat their breasts in anguish because they have done a foolish thing. They lost their opportunity to finish in gloriously with God because they allowed their they allowed temptations to get a better get a better thing over them. I ask you take a few steps and return to the Lord. I encourage those who are walking with God to continue and keep walking with the Lord. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the scenery. Just talk to our Father in heaven, just obey Him, give whatever He wants us to give. And I believe with all my heart that as the scripture has said, the best is yet to come for all of us. Father, I thank you tonight, today for your goodness and grace, your mercy and your love and your favor. Thank you for those who are watching and hearing, Lord God, this broadcast. Lord God, you are our ever faithful Father. Merciful and good and kind and loving, generous and faithful, providing us with everything that we need. But you have, Lord, gently, kindly, and mercifully dealt with us to break us, to deal. Lord God, whatever issues in our lives are not in alignment with you. Oh, Lord God, thank you for all the dealings that we receive, Lord. That our lives, Lord God, can be built up in a way that you want us, want us to be built up. And thank you for using us, oh Lord God, even in little ways, Lord God. But also thank you as well, because there will be an increase, oh Lord God, of your hand at work in our lives. There will be an increase, Lord God, of our usefulness before you. For the glory of your holy name. I pray that your people, Lord God, every day as they go to work, go to their business, or go to school, oh Lord God, that they will always be conscious that they are instruments in your hands, oh Lord God, useful to the Master. And that we will enjoy all this, Lord God, for the glory of your name. Bless, O Lord God, those who are listening, even those who may have some ailment on their bodies, sicknesses, or human weakness. I speak the strength of the Lord to come upon you. I pray also for provision, God, miraculous provision for those who are in need, Lord God, in this area. I pray for healing, Lord, not just physical healing, but emotional healing, O Lord. Some broken relationships to Father God. Give you all the glory and the honor and the praises today in Jesus' name. Amen.